In today's video, ladies and gents, we're gonna do a 2024 Chevrolet Trax RS, it's actually a 2RS, interior tour. It's a very windy day out today, so rather than film outside, we're gonna film inside, and we're gonna show you all about the new 2024 Chevrolet Trax interior. Uh, I've been kind of playing around with things for the last five, 10 minutes or so to get uh, accustomed to it and used to it. So far, I like what I see. We're gonna go through it, we're gonna see what you think. First things first, again, this is a 2RS model. The only package this does not have is driver confidence package, which gives you the side blind zone alert on your mirrors and your cross traffic with rear park sensors. So everything on the interior that we're gonna look at is pretty much everything you can get in a Trax. Now, you'll notice the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust my seat. We're gonna use the bar underneath here to slide the seat forward and back. This vehicle does not come with a power seat as an option. It is, however, a six-way manual seat. So we just moved it forward and back. If we look on the side here, you'll have one lever you can use to ratchet the seat higher or lower, and then you have one for your recline. So you can recline the seat obviously back and forth like most vehicles. So it is six way, it's manual. Once you set it, you forget it. If you have multiple drivers in the household, you're just gonna have to make those adjustments depending on who's driving the vehicle. You also have a tilting and telescopic wheel. So you look underneath, you're gonna drop this lever down. Now we can move this wheel in and out, up and down, wherever you decide you like it. You lift that lever back up, you lock it in place. One thing I do really like about the RS model here, you do have the flat bottom steering wheel. So it gives you more of a sporty, more of a performance feel. You also have uh, three different materials essentially on the wheel. You have like a gloss finish along the bottom here. You have a perforated, I'm assuming this is like a synthetic leather. Maybe It may actually be real leather, I gotta look it up. Uh, perforated leather section, and then you also have like a, a smooth leather section up top. So it's a nice steering wheel. It is a heated steering wheel, and you have multiple sets of controls, uh, cruise control on the left, on the right hand side here you have your Bluetooth controls and you have some driver information center uh, screen controls which is for the screen here. Also if you look at the back of the steering wheel here you're going to see some toggles. You can uh, raise your volume up and down here on the right hand side. And on the left hand side here you have the ability to change your uh, preset stations or if you're listening to like Pandora or Spotify you can skip to the next song. You know so a couple basic radio controls there on the back of the left side of the steering wheel. Right side door panel, simple controls, windows, mirrors, locks, very easy, very simple. One thing I will notice in this vehicle for the first couple minutes is something that uh, I, it popped out, I'm gonna point it out. This trim here, which actually looks really nice on the door panel, you can see you have some gloss trim. It's got a little pattern, a little texture to it. You have some nice uh, red stitching here again because this is the RS. But one thing I noticed, this little piece of trim is raised above this piece here. So when you go to adjust your windows or move your uh, mirrors controls around, you feel it. You feel yourself kind of scraping on this. Um, it's definitely here on the driver's side. You go to the passenger side, uh, same thing. Same thing here, you just feel it. It's a very, very minute little detail. I'm just trying to be thorough in pointing out things that I'm experiencing as I'm experiencing them. Right hand side of the steering wheel, uh, headlights and your adjustment for your panel dimmer at night. Automatic headlights, they go on, they go off, they do everything by themselves. You can see you have a nice uh, red accented trim around the climate bezel here that's gonna repeat on the passenger side of the vehicle, again with some nice red trim and some gloss black. Uh, the dashboard is all hard plastics. You'll notice that you do have a little textured pattern to it. You know, everyone always says, oh, it's hard plastic, it's hard plastic. I don't know anybody who actually drives their vehicle around holding the hard plastic, like it has to be soft to the touch. Like to me, it doesn't really matter. I use this stuff called 303 protectant. You put that sort of stuff on the dashboard and the things like that, it maintains a nice sheen. It looks good, it's durable. I think the amount of different materials and the little texture and patterns they use actually helps out and gives it some contrast, which makes it look less boring. And uh, I think it takes away from the fact that it's actually plastic. Like it is what it is, it, it looks nice. Left-hand stalk here, obviously turn signals, high beams and telebeam, which is where your uh, high beams will cycle on and off by themselves. Right-hand side, wipers, super easy. Um, you know, it's gonna be your front wiper, it's gonna be your rear wiper at the uh, at the very end here, and then your wash. If you pull towards you, it's gonna wash the front. If you push away from you, it's gonna wash the back window. To the right side of this room, you have your engine start stop button. This is a keyless uh, system. So as long as you have the key in your pocket, when you get in the vehicle, you push that button, you can start it up. It does have remote start. This key fob will remote start from about 200 feet away. And this has the remote access plan for three years where you can actually remote start the vehicle from your smartphone. You could also locate it on a map, unlock, lock, check tire pressures, all sorts of cool stuff. That's the My Chevrolet app. It's awesome. 
One big thing I want to point out, center armrest with storage. It sounds like something that you would see, obviously, in most vehicles. However, the previous tracks did not have this. So this is something I really like. I'm glad it has. You got a little storage pocket up front here. You have a couple uh, cup holders. You also have a spot for a phone, which a S10 Galaxy uh, Plus does fit in there. So that's pretty good. And you have, uh, if I move forward a little bit more, this one has the wireless charging pad. That is an option that comes with the sunroof when you get the sunroof package. So you got to get the sunroof to get the wireless charging. We also have a standard shift knob, which is nice. A lot of people still like the fact that you have like your conventional shift knob versus, uh, you know, electronic pull tabs and things like that. You do have an electronic park brake. So you just pull that to set and then to release when your foot is on the brake pedal, you would just press down and uh, you can release it. Now, if you forget to release it, let's say your park brake is set like it is right there. You get in, you don't think about it. You go into drive. The minute you go into drive and you feel that tug, it releases itself. So before you can even get to it, it'll be it'll be off and you won't have to worry about driving with the electric brake on. A couple buttons up front here. You do have your uh, auto start stop deactivate. So yes, this 1.2 liter turbo engine can turn off when you're at red lights and things of that nature to stop pollution, save fuel, that sort of stuff. If you don't like that feature, you can deactivate it right here. Um, like most Chevys, actually like all Chevys, I'm assuming it's the same way with this. Actually, let's try it. Let's turn the vehicle off, open our door to reset everything, restart it, and then it, uh, it is back on. Yeah, so you have to turn it off every time you start the vehicle if you don't like that feature. Right next to that is your lane departure warning with lane keep assist. That is the feature that uh, the camera can see the lane lines, anything over 37 miles an hour. If you get too close to the lane line, it'll give you a warning and uh, it can actually nudge the wheel left and right to put you back in your lane. Great feature to have on. You can deactivate that if you don't want it. Above that, we have climate control. You have your on off button. This is a single zone. So you have hot to cold here on the right. You have your fan speed here on the left, direction of where you want your air, your front and rear defrost. And this does have heated seats for driver and passenger, high, medium, low settings. The seats are what GM is calling Evotex. This is a synthetic uh, fabric or a synthetic material. Uh, it looks, it feels just like leather. It feels very, very durable. And I really like how they outfitted the RS model here. You do have some uh, red accents on the jet black trim. You have some portions that are perforated. You have some portions that aren't. So again, the contrasting materials here really give the vehicle uh, interior a really nice look. It, it looks, uh, it looks sharp. They did a very nice job. Okay, now let's get to the fun stuff. The 11 inch diagonal screen here for your infotainment. You also have an eight inch diagonal screen for your driver information center. And now that I see my arm reflection, I really should probably wear like a black long sleeve shirt when I make these videos to try to cut down on the glare. Uh, but anyway, we'll work with what we have. Climate control at the bottom, you also have a climate button. You could adjust your climate settings right from the screen if you would like. You do also have um, your menu buttons on the side here. So we have a home button, which is gonna bring up uh, your main icons, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, climate settings, and the Wi-Fi hotspot. If I go to Android Auto, because I did pair my phone, which is on the wireless charger here, to the vehicle, you can see you can sort of have like a split screen where you have your nav and you have your audio or whatever you might be listening to, phone contacts can appear on there, or I can go full screen nav. I'm using Google Maps right now, which is awesome. When you press this button, it'll bring you to a menu. You press the dots, it'll bring you to all the apps that you're allowed to use. This is gonna look very similar, obviously, for Apple CarPlay. Uh, you'll also notice that if we go back to our home button, Apple CarPlay is grayed out right now because it's not being used. Android Auto is lit up. Everything looks nice, everything looks uniform. This radio is all touchscreen, so if we hit the music note, that's gonna bring us to our uh, our radio functions, if we hit the little icon here, this brings us to our source. So now you have your AM, your FM, your satellite, Android Auto, uh, you can add devices. I'm not sure how many, I didn't look it up yet, but generally Chevy's you can link at least five devices to the radio system. Uh, below that we have our phone icon. If I hit that, it's gonna bring up our phone screen. You have a keypad, you can dial numbers, you can go to contacts, your recents, all that sort of stuff. And then uh, here we have our TC, which is traction control. You can turn the system off. You can turn the traction control and the electronic stability control system off, or you can have both on. Probably best to leave both on. Uh, it's interesting that this is on screen versus an actual button. Usually we would see a traction control button down here on this panel. So it's interesting that it's on the screen. Another thing that's interesting is your gauges. If we go to um, our, our little uh, checklist button here, here's your trip odometer, trip one and two. You have your fuel economy gauge. If we go to gauges, you're gonna see you have battery volts and coolant temperature. If I go to maintenance, it's gonna give us our tire pressure and our oil life. Now each one of these, you can see there's an arrow here. You can bring it up and you can say show in cluster. So if I hit show in cluster, it's actually gonna bring it over to the cluster 
in front of you, your driver information center. If you want to remove it from the cluster, you got to hit remove from cluster. So any one of these gauges that you would like to see on this screen in front of you, you can kind of send over to the screen. Personally, I like the tachometer. If I'll rev it up a little bit here, you'll see that kind of revs up. Uh, your, your, your needle revs up digitally and you have your speedometer there in the middle. So I would probably most likely leave it on that. You do have your fuel gauge on the left side of the screen and your uh, coolant temperature on the right hand side of the screen. You also have your mileage and your miles till empty. So this is six miles on the vehicle, 38 miles till empty, and a little indicator to let you know your fuel door is on the left side of the vehicle. Note to salespeople out there, that is in fact the mileage on the right hand side and the miles till empty on the left. Because when you look at that, if you look quick, you might go here and say, okay, the car's got 36 miles on it and that's what you're gonna put on your odometer statement. Uh, on this side here, obviously you see the six miles. I just confirmed if we go to our triple odometer since this vehicle is new, it only has 6.1 miles on it because this hasn't been cleared out. So it's definitely the mileage is on the right the miles to empty is on the left. I gotta tell you, as I'm recording this, the glare is so bad on these screens. I apologize for that. So far, I've been in this vehicle for probably over the last 15, 20 minutes. The seat's comfortable. I, I like the, the feeling of it. The driving position is nice. Uh, a couple of things I didn't touch on. We had the wireless charging pad here. We do have a couple of USB ports. You have a 12 volt plug. I also did not mention to the right of the climate control is your hazards. If you have to pull over, double park, anything like that. You do have a standard style glove box you know typical for for any vehicle let's jump in the back seat real quick i'll show you that and then we'll look at the cargo area and then that'll be pretty much a wrap on our interior tour of the chevy the 2024 chevrolet Trax rs sitting in the back seat i have room i'm comfortable uh, i have leg room i have head room i'm six foot five i'm a pretty tall guy you'll notice that the trim on the back doors is a little less elaborate than the front no stitching no fabric panel like a evotex panel on the back here you know, it's a little more basic compared to the front door panel. So they did cut back on cost there. You can see you got gloss trim and stitching, whereas in the back you don't. The seats are still outfitted with the same type of materials. You'll notice there is no pull down uh, armrest or cup holders in the middle here. So you're gonna have to use the cup holders that are on the door. There's one obviously on each side. And then you have a compartment here where you can put maybe a cell phone or something like that, just to kind of seat it in there and you have your USB-C and uh, you know, regular USB chargers. Nice flat floor in the back, so uh, everyone will have adequate space and leg room and, and you know, everyone will be comfortable. And that's basically it back here. I will point out these lights are all halogen, no LED bulbs, nothing like that inside this vehicle that I found as of yet. Inside the back of the cargo area here in the new tracks, you have a lot more space than you had in the previous car. You do have this uh, panel that lifts up to expose the spare tire. You got a little small pocket on the side and you can even put stuff inside here. You know, this sits pretty high. So you have about, I would say four or five inches of, of depth in here. So if you wanted to put like jumper cables or anything like that, you could probably fit them. Um, this obviously does remove. This is gonna kind of block anything you have a value in here. But if you need to put something bigger in, you just take this off and uh, take it out of the vehicle and you can slide in longer items. Obviously the seats do fold down, which I failed to mention uh, earlier but just as easy as that. So now you can fit a lot longer item in. Two more things too, uh, three inches more leg room in the second row on this new tracks compared to the previous generation and six cubic feet more interior space on the new tracks when compared to the old model. So I really think we have a winning vehicle here. We are gonna sell a ton of these uh, for now. That was our interior tour. Stay tuned for more videos because I'm gonna do a ton of stuff uh, while I have this vehicle in stock.